Oh, hello, I'm Peter Barnett, a product manager at Influx Data. And in this video, we're gonna be walking through how to get started with Influx DB3 Enterprise. Now, if you're looking for more information on Influx DB or what time series data is, uh, that's gonna be a good prerequisite of information that we're not gonna cover here. So I would highly suggest you perhaps go to one of our other videos on YouTube and we'll link some in the description below. That'll get you a little bit more up to speed on just the purpose of a time series database. Uh, but to get a little more into actually getting started, let's first talk about installation. Now the best place to install Enterprise is by heading to influxdata.com. And here you can find our installation script, which will handle a multiple different ways of actually getting started and installing Enterprise. Now, if you're on Windows, we do support Windows, uh, but we don't have a script for installation. And you can find more by clicking this link or by also just going to our documentation. And there you'll be able to actually install uh, for Windows. Uh, but if you're on Linux or Mac OS, we do support uh, this great script to help installation. But there are other ways you can just do direct Docker pulls as well, and we'll walk through that. So if I copy this script, I'll then go to my terminal and paste and run. Now the great thing about this script is it handles both for a Docker and for a direct simple binary download. Now we definitely suggest using Docker for just a lot of different reasons. But if you do want to use the local installation just through a binary sort of uh, pull and an installation in that pathway, you definitely can do it. Uh, all you have to do here is click the simple download. What that's going to do is pull the right installation for your operating system and your architecture, and you're ready to go. You'll be able to start running this with a simple uh, command to actually uh, kick start influx db3 enterprise. Now you can find that command and all that different information either in documentation or by waiting a little bit longer in this video. We'll walk through Docker. Uh, we'll continue for the rest of the videos using Docker, but the commands will remain the same. So let's talk about how you can actually install using Docker. Uh, the best way to do that is, of course, probably using uh, this installation script, but you could also just do a Docker pull on InfluxDB 3-Enterprise. And then from there, you can handle tagging it in the way you want and what that process should look like. Uh, but that is certainly an easy, effective way to always make sure you're pulling the latest image uh, for Docker. Uh, as well, you can also use our installation script, which will pull it, uh, make sure you have the correct uh, image tagged as well, and then do some verification. Now, one of the key things from here is that there's sort of different pathways you can go. Uh, one is just by doing a very simple memory-based only uh, process for running InfluxDB. It's great for very simple tests, but if you want anything of persistence, and if you wanna be able to test this over a length of time, you're gonna to wanna to use more than just in-memory persistence. And so we at minimum recommend a file-based uh, solution, and that's what we'll be walking through here today. So the first thing we'll wanna do is actually create a directory to store this data long-term. So I'll use a hidden directory, maybe we'll go with InfluxDB uh, data, and then I'll also wanna create a plugins directory. Uh, InfluxDB3 uh, Core and Enterprise both come with a processing engine, and we definitely wanna make sure we include uh, a place to actually store our plugins where we can run this processing engine and really exercise the full power of Enterprise. So I'll create a uh, plugins directory as well. And now we're ready to actually start the container and run this image. So we'll do that by doing docker run, and I'm gonna put this in an interactive terminal with dash IT. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I am going to suggest it for the first time just so you can do it locally and understand a little bit more how to work with uh, InfluxDB. And then uh, in the future, you can use just environment variables to actually, and parameters passed in to automate a lot more of the process. Uh, but we'll run docker run uh, dash it. Now we'll want to actually mount the two directories we just created, and so we'll do uh, influxdb underscore data, and we'll need to set that to a data directory. And then we'll also want to mount the uh, plugins directory we just created. So we'll do plugins, and we'll mount that as well to a plugins directory. And finally, we'll have to pass in what image it is that we are trying to run here, and that's gonna be our influxdb3 enterprise. So we now have everything we need on the Docker side for creating this container and running it. But now we wanna actually run through the process for starting InfluxDB. And so that's gonna be by running InfluxDB3 serve. That's your main starting command to actually spin up InfluxDB. Uh, there's a couple of things we wanna pass in now. Uh, the first is gonna be what's called a cluster ID. Uh, this is gonna be key for sort of bringing together a set of nodes in a multi-node environment, and making sure they're all writing to the same space using the same token information uh, when necessary in the different areas, uh, and then handling compaction and so much more. 
If you're running in a single node environment, it's still required, uh, but it won't have as much of an impact as you would in a multi-node setup with high availability and so much more. So we're gonna pass in a cluster ID. You'd want this to maybe represent perhaps a specific workload, uh, maybe this is a certain organization or some other set. Here, I'll just use cluster zero, uh, but it'd be good to have a more descriptive term in a real production environment. Then we'll also need to pass in a node ID. And this is very similar to the cluster ID, except it's specific to this individual node in this instance that's running. So here, again, I'll just call this node zero, uh, but I would suggest you use a more descriptive term. Now, we also want to pass in where we're actually storing this data. Like I said, we're doing file storage, so we'll say we're going to do file, and then for our data, we're actually storing it. Since we are doing file storage, we have to say where we're actually going to store that. We'll then say the data directory, which we mounted earlier, and this will actually save again locally uh, on my InfluxDB uh, data directory. And then finally, we'll also want to start our plugins. Uh, excuse me, plugins directory uh, by sort of acknowledging that we want to actually run a processing engine. So we will do a plugin directory and we'll pass in our plugins directory that we ran previously. And again, this will store under our local uh, folder of dot plugins within the Docker's mounted volume of plugins. And that's what we need. So that's a long sort of command to actually get started because we're doing both the container and running InfluxDB. Uh, but all together, it's really going to cohesively create uh, the entire flow that we need to not only start this service, but ensure it's running in the proper orientation that we want. And so now we'll press enter. We're now given a couple of different op options. The, the first is a free trial option, which we're going to select here. Uh, but the other two are for uh, one of you. Number two is if you're doing a commercial setup and you've actually already spoken with Influx Data, uh, that would be the purpose you would use that for and that would be explained to you during that process. And the, the number three is if you're just using this for non-commercial hobbyist use case, you want to use enterprise, but you're just doing this at home and you just want sort of that free approach that you can do without a certain specific trial. That's what home use is for. You can definitely use it. Highly suggest you as well if you're in that hobbyist home use case to go ahead and use that, that home use license. But since uh, we're just trying to, again, start this up and proof of concept and want a really robust setup that we can test and, and prove out, we'll go ahead here and select a free trial. And then you'll have to put in your email address. Now for here, uh, if you haven't already created one in the past, you'll have to go and actually validate your email. Since I've already done that before previously, I don't have to right now. Uh, but in a normal running setup, if you haven't done this before, you will have to go validate your email uh, to then run. And we're done. It is running now. It's running on port 8181. And we are now ready to kind of continue on with Influx DB3 Enterprise. Now, before we kind of end this video, there is one more step I do want to walk through that is critical to really unlocking anything more with Enterprise. And that's by setting up your initial operator token. Now, this is critical because without it, you can't really do anything uh, within Influx DB or you would have to go back and actually restart your service without authorization, and we don't suggest that. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is create a new tab here. And what we're gonna to have to first do is find where our Docker image is. So we'll do Docker PS, and we currently have our, this Docker containers ID. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is actually connect to this ID, again, with that interactive terminal, and we're going to pass in, uh, I'm gonna to wanna to connect with a bash terminal here. Uh, so now that we've created that, we are now inside the Docker container and can interact with it uh, in, 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 interiorly. And so what we're going to want to do here is very simple. We just want to create InfluxDB3 create token dash dash admin. And once we do this, it will actually sort of lock down uh, the entire container and ensure that only those with the valid token coming in can actually be processed. Uh, currently, there is no token at all, and so nothing will be accepted or queried. No, no requests will be granted. Uh, but once we do this, we'll begin to actually begin making requests with this token. So now that we've created our new operator level token, uh, we have that token that we can actually copy. Definitely, definitely store this token securely. It's not going to be shown again. Um, and so this is a one-time opportunity to make sure you store this locally and securely uh, and so that you don't have any other problems coming through. 
Now, uh, as we continue through this process, there's been certainly a lot more that we can walk through, and that's gonna be coming in future videos. And so if you want to continue to learn how you can write data, how you can query data, and so much more, definitely stay tuned uh, to, and follow along with this series because we're gonna really show you the power of InfluxDB and how you can leverage it for your time series data needs. Uh, thanks for listening, and hope you have a good one. Take care.